Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So this is the last video of our NumPy library uh, series and in this video we are going to be learning how to turn images into a NumPy array. Now this is very useful because in machine learning uh, machines don't know what pictures are so they only can read numbers so it would be really really useful if we knew how to turn images into a NumPy array because then because NumPy arrays are full of numbers and if um, if we know how to do that then we can just feed the machine uh, this array okay so let's do that uh, okay so uh, what you want to search up is you want to search up anaconda prompt if you're in Windows um and you can search up terminal if you are in mac or linux whoops i don't close that okay so you want to zoom in over here okay so um now that you have done that what you want to do now is you want to type in some commands now please uh make sure you've set up your environment um Otherwise, if you have, you don't need to worry about that. But if you haven't, uh, please go ahead and set up your environment. It will be really it. Otherwise, none of these commands will work. OK, so uh, just a few precautions. If you don't remember how to uh, execute the commands for opening Jupyter Notebook, uh, just stay here. Uh, just I'll show you how to do that. But then if we've already launched it, then just, you can just skip this part. OK, and then we'll start learning. So the first thing you want to do is we want to activate our environment by going conda activate. Okay, and we have to type in the file path of our environment. So desktop, desktop, uh, whoops, <laughs> desktop, desktop folders and now of course practice project and env which is our environment so now you press enter the base should turn into this file path and now we can type in jupyter notebook so let's wait for it so uh, you'll know when it's coming, when it comes up with a bunch of uh, uh, URLs and links, okay? Uh, so it'll come up with some information and then, yeah, so like, great. Now it comes up. Okay, okay, there we go. So um, this is the home page, and now we need to navigate to our Jupyter Notebook. So let's do that. Okay, so here we are. Now, I'm not going to use this introduction to NumPy notebook that we uh, normally use. Um, I'm going to do a new one just so we know that it's our kind of project work. Okay, so um, what we want to do is we want to go to, we want to go new Python 3 and it will come up with a notebook. Okay, so I'm going to rename this. So, uh, what is our notebook called? So, we're going to call this NumPy in action. Okay, because we are going. that is what we are going to look at. And let's uh, take away this space over here. Okay, so uh, beautiful. So, now we have our notebook ready. So, what are we learning today? So what we're going to do is we are going to look at, um, we're going to look at a practical e example of NumPy in action. Okay, <laughs> that's very exciting. Um, so uh, let me just zoom out. There we go. So um, in my... Uh, thing in my uh, NumPy folder I have this file called images and it's got the car image the dog image and a panda image okay uh, we're going to use those images I'll put the link for those images in the um, in the description below so you guys can uh, 
go and download it but uh, it's is there's no need for any specific images uh it's just you know kind of uh you know what we should just think about using normal images okay so so yeah we're going to use this images and the first image we're going to use is the panda image okay so uh let's sum it let's just take a quick look at this in markdown so uh you say img srs which means img source uh this is equal to it so um it is in my images let me check this but uh no it doesn't have a capital it doesn't have a capital y so images and then slash panda.png and there we go here is our beautiful beautiful panda image so so as i told you we are going to be looking at uh we're going to be converting this image into a numpy array okay and we're also going to be using the matplotlib library okay so um from matplotlib.image import imread now imread is a little uh package in matplotlib which allows you to um read images and convert them into a numpy array okay um so what we want to do is uh, once we've done that okay so um let's see if this is working correctly whoops yeah there you go so that worked no errors there so the first thing we want to do is we're going to create a variable so i'm going to say panda is equal to imread so let's press shift tab to see what it does so it reads an image from a file into an array and we need to put in the f name so what is f name so the f name is string or file like so this f name is the image to read and it has to be as a string so we need to put the path so mine is in images panda.png okay so that's the one i want to run let's view panda okay so we got a pretty big array here okay so let's check the size shape and end dimension of this so we're going to say panda.size panda.shape and panda dot and dim okay so the size is actually pretty pretty big that's 170 uh thousand 100 um and the size is pretty big too 189 by 300 um by three so it and it is a three-dimensional array as you can see right here okay so the first thing you want to know is what is this over here so what is each um, element in this row over here? So these are RGB values of every pixel. Now, if I try to zoom in, I wouldn't be able to see it. So what you can do is, uh, what you can do is we open up this and we go to our images. Okay, so I am here. Um, and what I can do is I open up my images and i can open this up with gimp because gimp allows you to zoom in and see the pictures so we'll just open it up and um wait it sh it'll come up with the gimp star up so let's wait it's so painful to see that it gimp state takes so long but we'll just have to wait okay so <laughs> the gimp starts up uh, it doesn't take too long uh, if you have gimp you can use it to just observe all the pixels okay uh, so we're just gonna open this up so i can show you guys okay so here it is um so let's zoom in oops so as you can see here, if we zoom in, you can see that these little squares are actually pixels. So um, if we go back to here, we can see, uh, so let's say this first bit is how much red is in um, each pixel. So how much red is 
in this uh, whoops how much red is let's go to the top corner of it actually how much red is in this top corner pixel over here okay um and then this second bit is how much uh, green is in this top corner over here um and this uh, third one is how much blue is in this uh top corner pixel because the top corner pixel is the first pixel so uh yeah so here is our um a very big array of rgb values of every pixel okay so uh now let's use our car image so we will uh what we're going to do is we're going to say img source is equal to and it is in images car dot png and let's turn this into markdown here is this beautiful car okay very beautiful car um so let's turn this into um a array so what we're going to do is we are going to say um car is equal to im read uh car is equal to im read mm, was it again we need to put in the image so mine is in images car.png okay so let's view car now okay so this is another big array let's check the shape and everything so car.size car.shape and it is then car dot uh and okay so the shape is exactly the same uh actually no the size is exactly the same uh, no it's the size isn't exactly the same it, I, uh it is uh let's look at our pandas okay so it is the size is way bigger than the panda image it's about like 990 or something uh if i try to do quick maths um the shape is also it's uh the shape is bigger a bit bigger too but the dimensions are the same it has three dimensions okay so uh let's view our car image well i should have kept gimp open so now it's going to take a long time okay so uh before we actually do that uh just let's look at all of these rgbs so we can see that um there so if we look at our panned image there is actually a lot less because in this top corner it was it's actually all brown so it would be a lot less um but in this top corner it's kind of gray so it will kind of have a bit more okay so that's kind of how it works so let's zoom in okay let's zoom in so as you can see most of this is actually gray so all these values will actually kind of be similar okay and then the wheels will be black so yeah so this top section must be the car itself because uh, the values are very similar it's they all start with seven and they're kind of close together okay so just keep those observation skills and uh, you'll start to notice how you can tell a machine um these kind of patterns so like what so if it's if all the values are close together that must mean that um that must mean that there's an object there uh that is kind of like focusing on gray so a gray object there. okay so uh look at all of these different patterns and you'll soon understand how you can feed, tell uh, tell the machine what these are okay so last of all let's view our dog image so img source is equal to im images dog dot png turn into markdown and run and there is this beautiful beautiful dog okay um yeah so beautiful dog 
So now uh, let's uh, read this image. So we'll say dog is equal to im read. Okay, I spelled dog wrong. Dog is equal to im read images um images and then dog dot png and let's view dog okay so as you can see dog is actually um dog is much bigger okay so uh, it has four columns this time so let's view the size and shape and everything so dog dot size dog dot shape dog dot um dog dot and dim okay so the shape is way bigger than the car and the panda uh the size and shape are way bigger um it has it, it here it says four instead of three and it has, still has three dimensions so okay uh because there's like one uh one two three arrays in uh, three big arrays in here so uh what i'm guessing is um this fourth value over here should be the hex uh, uh the hex decimal okay because uh some if you have look at colors there um if you go to something like i don't know uh paint or something uh you'll kind of also uh, see hexadecimal kind of color so let's oops uh so you wouldn't really see it here but if you go up on the internet uh you'll also see hexadecimal so let's search up rgb values okay whoa <laughs> okay what happened here uh there we go so uh if we click on here so you can see that we've got this over here so hexadecimal uh value um so that is that what i'm guessing it could either be binary or hexadecimal okay so i don't really know what that is uh it it only appears with rather large image uh large image larger images so yeah okay so as you can see there's like more background here so we've got trees here and if we look at these patterns in here you can see that there's kind of a few patterns so this group of numbers is actually kind of close together so uh maybe that could be a tree okay um and then we've got this group of numbers that could maybe be the sleeve uh, and we've got this group and uh, so on and so forth so maybe this uh, kind of exercise will get you guys to start thinking about uh, the greatness um, uh, the greatness of turning images into numpy arrays because then you can look at patterns and that's what machine learning is all about looking at patterns trying everything uh, seeing what works uh, so on and so forth so yeah uh that's what i wanted to teach you guys today as you can see uh, this imre tool is a very useful tool it will um it's uh, really useful if you want to turn images into numpy arrays um and then you can actually start observing these numpy arrays and seeing uh like you can kind of identify which one is which like which part of this array matches this leaf or something like that okay um so you can search up rgb values and find out which one matches which so yeah if you like this video please like and subscribe and if you have any comments please comment them in the comment section below i would really love that uh if you guys ask me any questions you just comment them in the comment section below if you so in the next video uh what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at matplotlib um and then after that we're going to look at scikit-learn okay so um please look out for the next series of videos where we're going to be learning about the matplotlib library okay so i guess that's the end of this video bye